Welcome back. In this final video, we want to talk through some recommended books that we think every leader should read before they go on a short-term mission trip. Now, I could just give you a list, but instead, I'd rather walk you through some of the content of these books and how I believe they impact your opportunity and your leadership on a short-term mission trip. The first two books I'd love to recommend to anyone leading in any walk of life are two books by John Maxwell. He's a very famous leadership guru expert. He's written a variety of books, literally dozens and dozens of leadership books. Now, many of us know, if you are familiar with John Maxwell, if you've read one or two of his books, it feels like you've read a lot of them because a lot of the content seems to overlap. It's really good content, but again, it's somewhat repetitive. But there's two books of his that are very unique and very different from all of his other books. And I think they're really, really valuable for any leader. The first one is called Thinking for a Change. Maxwell writes this book about the ways that people think. And the reason this is important for a leader is because if you can understand how people think, you'll be able to lead them better. He talks about the 11 different ways that people think. And most of us, by default, we only think about one or two different ways. Someone who's really, really creative or a really great critical thinker typically maybe only goes into the arena of thinking in three different ways. But if there's 11 different ways and you're only thinking two or three different ways, that means there are a lot of different ways of thinking that you're not engaging with. And as a leader, it's essential that you understand how your people are thinking. If you know how people are thinking, you'll be able to craft your words and the experiences to inspire them and maximize their effort on the mission field. Again, this is a great book for any leader in any walk of life, but the value and the wisdom you'll learn in that book will be especially helpful on a short-term mission trip. The second book that John Maxwell has written that I think is very unique and different from all his other books is called Winning with People. It's sort of the 21st century version of the old classic book by Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. John Maxwell takes a lot of the same content and really updates it for the 21st century. Of course, he adds a lot of his own wisdom and some of the things he's learned from different experiences in his ministry and business throughout the years. And it's a great book that really teaches you how to win people over, how to communicate, how to make people feel like you're lifting them up, how to give life and breathe life into people. When people are exhausted and tired, this is going to be a very, very valuable tool. In addition, as a leader on a trip, if you have assistant leaders on your trip, you can use books like Thinking for a Change or Winning with People to train them on how to be better leaders. You can give them bits of wisdom from books like this, and then you can challenge them to go ahead and implement that there on the short-term trip. As they implement those leadership wisdoms and leadership maxims, you'll be able to then come alongside of them and coach them, give them feedback, and help them be better leaders. So check those two books out, Thinking for a Change, and Winning with People by John Maxwell. The next book I want to highly recommend to every person that's going to be involved in missions, whether short-term or long-term, is a book called When Helping Hurts. This is by two guys, Steve Corbett and Brian Fiker. They talk extensively about how missions and charity work around the world has actually hurt certain people groups around the world. They talk a lot about different case studies and things they've observed in a variety of different countries. They spend a lot of time in the book talking about the continent of Africa. Those of us who live in the West have taken our wealth and our resources and gone to other countries and just pumped money into a variety of scenarios. When we see a problem, we just throw money at it. And what this has actually done has caused people in many different countries by the millions to become dependent on Western aid and charity. This is devastating. And they, and they talk extensively in the book on how much of the help and charity that has come from the West has actually hurt people all around the globe. If you're going to be involved in missions, you want to make sure that you are not involved in a way that will hurt people around the world. It is your responsibility to make sure that you lead your team in such a way that they engage in activities and campaigns and tasks that will be helpful to the people in that country, that will expand the influence of the local ministries and will help challenge the people to engage in helping themselves rather than being dependent on Western aid. This is a huge problem all around the world. And if you're going to be involved in missions, make sure that you are not doing it in a way that hurts people and causes them to be dependent. 
We don't want to amplify problems in this regard. We want people to be helped in a way that will push them to bringing transformation in their society, not being more dependent. So make sure you read that book, When Helping Hurts. In addition to that, there's a small group study and some small group version of the book that you can take your entire team through. Every time I've led a trip, before the trip, I typically have my people go through that curriculum and I help them understand why we are doing the things we're doing and why we will choose to refrain from doing certain things. The reason is because we want to do missions work in a way that doesn't hurt the people. Read that book, When Helping Hurts. The next book I want to highly recommend to any leader that's going to be involved in missions is a book called Let the Nations Be Glad by John Piper. Now, I know that sometimes Piper can be a little bit of a lightning rod. He's a little bit of a controversial personality sometimes, depending on what denomination or genre of Christianity you're a part of. But I want to encourage you to read this book because it talks a lot about missions from the perspective of the people receiving the gospel and how they will not be satisfied in this life apart from Christ. John Piper is making the point that the nations will never be glad. They will never be satisfied unless they have Christ. And it is imperative that we take the gospel to all the nations and all the peoples of the earth. John Piper is challenging churches to let the nations be glad. He talks extensively about the theology of missions. He talks extensively about philosophy of missions. And he gives some practical tools and tips on how to engage in missions. If you're going to engage in missions, you want to make sure you do it effectively and efficiently with right theology and right philosophy. John Piper's book is no doubt, far and away, the absolute best book I've ever read on engaging in missions, understanding a theology of missions and a philosophy of missions that will propel your team to be further engaged in the Great Commission, not just on a short-term trip, but for the rest of their lives. Again, one of the best books I've ever read. It's called Let the Nations Be Glad, again by John Piper. Another book I want to highly encourage you to read before you go on a short-term mission trip is a book called Where There Is No Doctor by a woman by the name of Jane Maxwell. Not related to John Maxwell, by the way. The book is really, really simple. It's very practical. Basically, it tells you what to do and how to address different medical situations if there is no doctor nearby. That's why it's called Where There Is No Doctor. If you're going to be leading a trip, chances are at some point on your trip, there may be people that get sick or have some medical issues. You want to know how to handle that. In a previous video, I talked extensively about being on a short-term mission trip to Thailand and having one of my students needing to get their appendix taken out. And I was prepared for that. One of the reasons was because I had read this book, Where There Is No Doctor. If you read this book, it'll teach you all you need to know about kind of just the bare bones of medical issues that may arise, understanding what to do, what not to do, how to address things like fevers, when to give ibuprofen versus Tylenol, when to give you know, Excedrin rather than some other pain medicine. When to have someone lift their ankle if it's hurting versus putting it in ice. Helping people understand how to deal with nosebleeds or fevers or things like that. Just general medical advice. When there is not a doctor or a medical professional nearby, you're the team leader that's going to be responsible to address that. So read the book where there is no doctor. It'll help you a lot. In fact, I encourage you to take it with you on the mission field because you're not going to be able to memorize everything. I usually take it with me and I keep it handy. Whenever a situation arises, I can hit that chapter that deals with that and I can adequately address issues that may come up on the mission field. The next book I want to recommend is called Jesus-Centered Youth Ministry by Rick Lawrence. Now, even if you're leading a trip that is not young people, I would still encourage you to check this out. There's one chapter in particular where he talks about cross-centered preaching. He talks about how to speak in such a way where you're bringing the gospel at the forefront of everything you're doing. Rick Lawrence quotes the great Baptist preacher of the 1800s, Charles Spurgeon. When Spurgeon says this, in preaching, he presents the text. Whenever he's preaching, he reads through whatever particular scripture verse he's preaching from. And then as soon as he presents the text, he reads through it, he makes a beeline for the cross. He's taking this text and he's trying to connect it to the work of Jesus at the cross. And I want to encourage you to do this on your mission trip. Anytime you are presenting a gospel truth, a passage of scripture, or some element of biblical narrative, make sure you always connect it to the work of Christ. If you don't do this, chances are you may easily fall into moralism. Our goal is not just to make people more moral. Our goal is to make people more gospel-centered. And Rick Lawrence does a great job of this in his book. 
I'd encourage you to get a copy of it, skim through it. Maybe not read the whole book, but just kind of skim through and check out chapters that you think would be helpful to you, in particular the preaching chapter. But if you're leading a trip of people that are younger, like middle school students, high school students, or even college students, I'd encourage you to read that book cover to cover because there's lots of great wisdom and bits of information that Rick Lawrence will give you in that book that will help you tremendously as you are leading a younger demographic on the mission field. Check that out, Jesus-Centered Youth Ministry by Rick Lawrence. Another book I want to encourage you to check out is a book called Heaven's Heroes by David Shibley. It's basically a book of biographies. People like Robert Moffat and David Livingston and the father of modern missions, William Carey. People like Jim Elliott and Hudson Taylor and many others are covered in this book. It's really simple. It's, it's actually a, a kid's book that I usually take with me on mission trips and I read from it. Each biography is just maybe three or four pages talking about different missionaries. And what I typically do on a mission trip is I'll pull the book out maybe over lunch and say, hey, let me tell you about a great missionary named Hudson Taylor. And I'll just read the story to them and what Hudson Taylor did. If you don't have one, get a copy of Heaven's Heroes. You can easily get it on Amazon for a couple bucks and just take it with you on the trip and read to your team. Make it story time. Some of my teenagers on previous trips have sort of laughed about it. They say, oh, this is story time with dad. And it'll just, we get, a, get the book out and I just read a chapter for them and read the stories about some of the great people that have done great things for God all around the globe. The reason I want to do this is because I want them to have a taste of world missions. I want them to know about people that have gone before them, that have paved the way, and it can be a form of inspiration for them so that they can engage in world missions. Get a copy of Heaven's Heroes, read through it, take it with you on your trip, read it to your people. It will inspire them greatly. Another great book I want to encourage you to read if you want to develop your, in your public speaking is a book called How to Speak to Youth and Keep Them Awake at the Same Time. Now, again, even if you are speaking to people of an older demographic, this book will be really, really valuable for you. Ken Davis is one of the world's foremost experts on communication, and he'll teach you quite a bit on how to craft sermons, how to craft teachings, how to facilitate small group discussions, how to craft mini sermons and nuggets, different tips and techniques that you can implement to make your speaking more effective. If you're going to be leading a short-term mission trip, you're going to be speaking a lot. You're going to be giving instructions. You're going to be giving mini sermons. You're going to be talking to people quite a bit, both to people on your team and to people that you're ministering to there in country. You want to make sure that you're the best communicator that you can be. In addition to that, it's important to note that good communicators have the ability to inspire confidence and trust with their people. If you get up in front of your team and you're not able to articulate truth, gospel truth, lessons, or even simple instructions and announcements. If you're not able to articulate that well, there's a potential that you might lose confidence. It may cost you credibility with people on your team. But if you can get up and you can accurately articulate in a quality and efficient way everything they need to know, it will strike confidence in them. They will listen to you more. They are more likely to be inspired by you. And they're more likely to take the lessons that you teach them into ministry with them which will ultimately make them more effective in ministry. If you're going to be a great short-term mission trip leader, it's essential that you're a good communicator. You don't have to be a great public speaker or the best motivational speaker out there. I'm not trying to make you into you know, Matt Chandler or Tim Robbins. That's not your goal. Your goal is simply this. Be the best communicator that you can be. Another book I'd recommend you read is a book called The Radical by David Platt. He wrote this book to really challenge the American church to become more radical. He makes it very clear that the Bible is calling us into a radical form of faith where we are desperately and sacrificially committed to spreading the gospel to all the nations and people groups of planet Earth. He talks a lot about the theology and philosophy of missions. He talks a lot about the problems with the American church that have been a detriment to spreading the gospel. And he gives a lot of practical advice on how you can be more involved in missions. He also talks extensively about different people that have made great impact throughout the world. People like John Wesley and missionaries like William Carey, a variety of people that you've never heard of, quote-unquote ordinary people that are making huge impact by being radical. It's a great book that will challenge you and will inspire you and will give you great material to take with you on the mission field so that you can challenge and encourage your people to be radical. David Platt has said all sorts of great and challenging statements. He has talked about the American dream and the consumer mentality that has been an obstacle to spreading the gospel. 
he's challenged Christians by saying things like, we've taken the American dream and we've put a Christian spin on it. And he really exposes how materialistic the church of Jesus Christ in America has become. He says things like, church, you are plan A and there is no plan B. He has made it very clear that God is going all in on the church. Now, God doesn't need the church. God could do it without you and I. But it's very clear to us in Scripture that God's favorite way of changing the world is through other people. He could do it without us, but He chooses to do it through us. He wants us to be a part of the story of changing the world. And David Platt talks a lot about that in the book. He'll give you bits of wisdom that you can share with your team to challenge them with. He says things like, we have a master who demands radical obedience. Jesus Christ, our master, demands radical obedience from us. If you're going to be an effective short-term mission trip leader, it is essential that you begin to challenge your people to be radical in their attitudes, in their mindsets, in how they approach their short-term trip, and that they be radical on how they live their life when they get back. Again, we never want people going on a short-term trip as a one-time thing. We want this to be a life-transformative event. And if you read a book like Radical and you take some of the wisdom from that book and you take it with you on the mission field and you share it with your people, it will help spur them on. It will correct them. It will rebuke them. It will challenge them to make sure this is not just a one-time event, but it will help them to learn on the mission field and then go home and be different. Make sure you read Radical by David Platt and encourage your people to read it as well. The last book I'd love to recommend to you is by Dr. Tim Elmore. He was actually one of John Maxwell's right-hand guys for many, many years. He has since launched his own organization, and he's done lots and lots of study on teams and leaders. And he has a variety of different books, but the one I want to recommend to you is a book called Habitudes. Now, there are different versions of Habitudes. The original version is a book that's got a, a mustard green color cover. Again, there are multiple volumes at this point, but the original one, I think, in my opinion, is the best one. Basically, Habitudes is a book where he shows a picture and then explains how that picture could impact your leadership. For example, he talks about the thermometer versus the thermostat. It's basically where I got this from when I talked about this in one of the previous videos. He talks about the thermostat and the idea of being a thermostat. He shows you a picture of it, and then he does it. He also shows you a picture of the velvet cover brick what it means to do that. He talks about the starving baker. He talks about a variety of things, different images, and he talks about how these things can impact your leadership. Get this book. It's super easy read. You can read it literally just in a few hours. It's super simple. And you can take it with you on the mission field. You can share the pictures with people on your team, and you can develop their leadership. I love doing this on mission trips when I have assistant leaders with me that I'm training to be leaders. I can take a book like Habitus with me, I can share one of the content from that book with them. I can challenge them to implement it, and then I can dialogue with them later in the day and see how it went. I can give them real-time coaching and feedback. The book Habitudes, basically, it's sort of like a cheat code for leaders. It just makes coaching other leaders really, really easy. So again, get a copy of Habitudes. It'll give you great images. It'll challenge your leadership. It'll expand your own thinking, and it'll give you a tool that'll make it easy for you to coach and train other leaders on the mission field. Habitudes by Tim Elmore, one of the best leadership books I've ever read. So this is the list of books we recommend to you. Again, I could have just given you a list, but I wanted to explain why these books are important and what you'll get out of them and how they will apply to you on the mission field. In the previous video, I talked extensively about being proactive in developing your own leadership skills. Don't just assume you're going to be okay, but be proactive. Think about your own flaws. Think about your own weaknesses. Try to get better in those areas. More importantly, think about your strengths. Think about how you can amplify those strengths and how you can utilize them on the mission field. And books like the books on this list will make you a better leader and ultimately will allow you to hit those three objectives more effectively and more efficiently. Again, the three objectives of a short-term mission trip leader, keep your team safe and secure, make sure you maximize the overall quality of the experience, and make sure you maximize the ministry impact that your team is having. If you are focused on those three things, your team is going to have an incredible experience. If you read some of these books and you implement some of the wisdom you learn from them, I promise you, you will be far more effective in reaching those three objectives. Your team will hit home run after home run on your short-term mission trip. I hope this wisdom will be valuable to you as you dive into it 
and you endeavor to lead teams on short-term trips.